So what is the validation rule in the DHS2? The principle we are going to share here, it will be based on how to understand how data quality, the principle of data quality, define what is the validation rule in DHIS2, understand how the validation rule can be used to measure consistency in DHIS2. We're going to execute some validation rule in data entry form. We are also going to execute some validation rule, a, a bulk in the entry form, it is for one facility, and in a bulk, like where we are in a district, and one to, to check the validation, version, validation rule for many organization units. We will also de describe how validation rule can be compared against a calculated threshold and uh, execute validation rule using threshold in the data app, data quality app. So the validation rules, the component of validation rule, we have four big components of validation rule. The validation rule helps us to calculate the constant consistency of data. But before get, reaching there on the consistency of data, the principle of data quality, data quality according to WHO are four. They are completeness, they are correctness, they are timeliness and consistency. Completeness reports understand how understand how data is being completed in the system. Correctness is to understand how the data are precise or not. So the data we are putting or the data manager who fill the form, the data he put in the system are correct or not. The timeliness is linked to the time and it is to measure if the data has been reported on time or after the stated time. And the consistency, which is the many components here in data quality, that's where we are using validation rule to compare the actual value against other data elements, against threshold, against external like survey, external value coming from survey or other source. Here yeah, again, we are presenting how those four aspects or four comp components of data quality are correlated together. The completeness help us to start for, for the form, the complete. Hello? The, it is coming like an echo. Yeah, it's coming like an echo, echo, echo in the hole. So it's not coming to you. Is it the same for everyone or it is only you? I think some people are I, I, th I think there is a bit of an echo, Hamza. Uh, maybe I don't know, where, maybe the room you are in, I don't know. But it, for me, I get also the echo. I don't know the others. Uh, my. Okay. Echo, they are saying there is echo in the in the echo. So let, let uh, okay. Let me do again. Let me explain this slide, and you'll tell me. Maybe it was because another mic was open near my my computer. So are you still hearing the same with echo? An improvement. Ah, okay. I guess I think there was another mic open near my computer. That's why. The echo, the echo was occurring. So coming back to our presentation, the data quality, according to WHO, has these four components, the completeness, the internal, and the, the internal consistency, the external consistency, and the consistency. The completeness help us to trigger 
like the consistency, the consistency. Before you measure the consistency, that has to be completed into the, into the form. That has to be filled in into the reporting form. And the cons completeness also goes uh, hand, hand to hand with the timeliness, because when we are completed also, the form is reported on the time it has been filling in, filled in. The consistency can be divided into two parts. There is consistency for the in, there is internal consistency, whereby we can compare the, the we can compare data element. The validation rule is comparing the data element entered from one data element, one part of that element against the other part of that element. That is for internal reporting form. In within one reporting form, people the validation rule can compare some data element against other data element. The external consistency is like comparing the data reported from one, one reporting form to other external source. External source can be like survey value, which has been imported into the DHS2, or the threshold, which also is a calculated value against which we gonna compare the data entered with the threshold. Data S2 allows for this various aspect of data quality to be checked. In some cases, additional work may be required in order to ensure availability, available data is necessary for comparison. Like especially for external consistency, there is an additional work which has to be done to import data which has been collected through a survey or to calculate some, uh, to put some formula for the calculated uh, value like for threshold. That is what they want to say in this line, what he's saying like in some case, additional work may be required to ensure availability of data. DHS2 is not a substitute for every possible data quality check that can be performed. However, can DHS2 can enhance, enhance the quality of data that is being entering substantially by using the built-in feature to review the data prior to analysis, interpretation, dissemination, and feedback. This is like the, the, whole, the, whole, uh, I, uh, the whole idea of the validation rule is to help the verification of data entered before they have been uh, disseminated or they have, you have sharing them out is to check the consistency of this data to see is this data are correct? Are these data matching the stated criteria? The so talking about the validation rules. Validation rules consist of three parts. Most especially there is a left side whereby we set some data element. There is an operator which is here in the middle and there is a right side. So if you can see below here, we have malaria. We have an example of malaria case treated against, we are comparing against all suspected malaria. So the validation rule here will, will come to say, to say it like malaria case treated should be less or equal to all suspected malaria cases. You understand here the idea is like, the case which has been entered in uh, the case which has been treated cannot exceed all the cases we receive at the a certain a given health facility. That's where we have the operator, which is showing like the case on the left side, the data in the left side has to be less or equal to the data in the right side. Note that this rule tell us what should be true. For example, the rule is not rotavirus two, rotavirus two second dose administrated, uh, which are higher than the rotavirus second outlier. So this, like on this example, it is saying the validation rule also is coming to state something which is true. It is not like stating something which is taken out of nowhere. So it has to be based on a true, on a logical situation. When we think about data, 
when we think about validation rule, we can actually consider different examples. There is different way of building validation rules or different example of making, creating validation rules. There is validation rule based on logical rules. The validation rule, uh, the validation rules built in or made based on logical rules are, for example, this, the previous example we showed, malaria case treated, which should be, the logical rule here is here in the middle, which should be less or equal to the suspected malaria case. You understand that the logical is like, we have some people with, who showed up at our facility, and among those people who showed up at our facility with malaria uh, symptoms, the people who has been treated cannot exceed the people who showed up. So they have to be less or equal. Another second way of building or creating a validation rule is using threshold. Using threshold, here it is, we have an example of rotavirus, sec, rotavirus second administered, which also should be equal or less than rotavirus threshold for that month. Here, we can calculate a value, and from that value, we compare the entered data against that value. Meaning like we have to go and calculate a threshold. After Later on, we will see how to calculate a threshold, or I will, see you in a, I will show you an example on how to calculate a threshold. Then we compare that threshold value with the value which has been entered into, into the reporting form. So basically, these are the two ways of building valid, validation rules. The first one is based on logical rules. The second one based on a comparison with a threshold, a calculated value. The validation rules can be incorporate, can incorporate data from aggregate data entry, from event capture, and from tracker capture. I guess all of us are familiar with uh, event data entry. So these are the reporting form people are using to report data. Aggregate is like for the monthly routine data or some program indicator, but let's say it is like for monthly routine data or quarterly. The event capture, most of the time, it is individual data. The event, the event and the tracker capture are individual data which have been capture, captured. Event is like coming from a one event or a survey and tracker capture is like a, a, a visit or a stage reporting from whereby people are coming and have been uh, followed are followed on every visit. So the validation rule can be incorporated, can be incorporated into this form to enable to check the quality of the data which has been entered. You could collect data from tracker, those administered by individual child, and compare this to an aggregated threshold that you have calculated from a particular time period. So from a tracker capture where I was explaining that it is individual data which are being uh, entered uh, following visit of uh, a person or some time also for a person, let's say in a person, here in this example is a child, you can calculate, you can incorporate a validation rule to calculate those data against a threshold, a calculated value which has been set based on, uh, on a particular period. You are also able to evaluate if these rules are violated by either viewing them in data entry, having them run on it. To check if the validation rules are correct, you know, we have set data. Remember the previous slide, we say, we have set like a logical rule, My malaria case treated has to be less or equal to malaria, all case of suspected malaria. So after setting that rules, we can check if that rule has been violated or not by viewing it into a data entry form or by running an automated scheduler, which will define, which you can define, or by, trigger, or by triggering them via a validation rule analysis, analysis. So you can go and perform a validation rule analysis 
the system will show you the rule which have been respected or and the rule which has been violated. Uh, can I hear something from the audience? Is so far, are you okay? Or should I continue or it is okay? It's fine from me. Fine for me. Thank you. Yes, Kayosa. It is good to know that people are following. So, I guess from here we can, there is a second part of using validation rules which can be generated from program uh, or uh, specific outliers. But can we jump in and do one first a demo so that we leave a little bit this, uh, this uh, too much theoretical stuff and we go for a demo? Can give me a few minutes, I show you what I've been talking and then we can continue with this slide. Let me shift. So to view this validation rule, we are gonna use an instance. The same instance will be used also by you, all participants, and you also gonna test your, by yourself what is a validation rule and how you can review a validation rule. So as usual, we log in. As I was explaining, the validation, once you are in your system, inside your instance, the validation rule can be viewed either through this Still data and Hello? Still, we can see the slide only. We cannot see the instance. Ah, you can, uh, let me reshare. Let me, I think the best way is to share the entire screen. So now you can see? Yes, I've absolutely. Looked. I've logged in. I think this process, every one of you mastering it. I've logged in and um, once you are in the in your instance, you are going on the app and you can check your validation rule either by passing through the data entry app or the data quality app. So for this first part, we're gonna first go into data entry part. As I was explaining, Hey, the internet is taking long. I want to display the data entry.
Uh -huh. Thank you. So we are in the data entry form. We're going to choose. We're going to choose a facility and check if the, the validation rule, which has been set, have been respected or have been violated. Let us choose a facility, a given facility. I guess all of you are seeing my screen. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So, so we will choose a given facility yes. here. We will choose data entry form. And we can select like a period, a given period. So there is three way where you are in a data entry form. There is a three where you can check the validation rules. You can check the validation rule first by clicking on this button, run validation rule. A second way here on the downs, down of the reporting form, you can ch check, you can click on this run validation rule. The two are doing the same. But also the third way is like to complete first the form, which will trigger the process of generating the comparison between the data entry form. So I can complete here. And after completing here, I can see if the validation rule are respected, are being violated or not. So on this specific case, you can see we have a warning message which are showing us that HIV test, a validation rule called HIV test positive male plus HIV test positive female has, has to be less or equal to HIV test performed male plus HIV test performed female. In other words, all HIV test, all HIV test performed the result, the positive result coming from all HIV tests performed has to be less than all the performed tests. You understand that is a logical, a logical rule. The, the, the result, the positive result has to be less or equal to the, all the tests which has been performed. So here the data element is being divided into male and female, but the, the rule here is to check was the HIV test positive less or equal to HIV, all HIV performed. So in our case, we can see clearly that on the left side, this is the left side. If you can see my screen, this is the left side. On the left side, we have 1,199 case of HIV, a combination of HIV positive male and female which are not less, which are not less than 296 tests performed. You can clearly see it here, even down, it is the same. HIV test positive male and plus HIV test positive female has, has are not, is not less or equal to HIV performed test male plus HIV perform test female. So this is the way you can check if the rule you set it in this form has been respected or not. So for us to go and to check if, or to correct this, we can correct this by status. Let me move this there. Huh? The validation rule can show clearly what is the problem. So we can see the problem is on this data element, the data element called HIV test positive and HIV test male, uh, female and male. So if you are going, if you are looking into this section, you can go and you reach to this, the section of sex where we have the HIV test performed and the HIV test positive. So this one, the, the addition of these two are lesser than the addition of this down here. 
or yet it has to be the opposite. So the test performed, the positive test has to be less than all the tests performed. So we can correct this value. We can correct this value and check if the validation rule is still, is still there. So once I have correct the value, I can go again and use this button or as I showed you, use this button and run the button. So you can see that rule has been respected and the warning message disappeared. This is how we can check the, this is how we can check the validation rule. This is the one, one way of checking the validation rule. Another way of checking the validation rule is to use the data entry, the data, uh, data quality app. So notice, note that on this, on this first way of checking if the rule is respected or not, you can do this way only for one facility. You can't do this on a bulk, like on a many facilities at once. So imagine that you are a supervisor, you are at national level or you are at district level. You want to check if the data entered, all the data respect the validation rules you set it into the reporting forms. So you cannot, if you have many, many facilities, you cannot go, you cannot have that time of going and perform the check on one facility, then you choose, you go to another facility, then you go to another facility. So the best way, of doing it at a higher level, you can run that test on a bulk, like at once I can run this test on all these facility. So to do so, I have to use the data quality app. I have to pass here through data quality app. And once I'm in the data quality app, Once I'm in the data quality app, I have this three section, but for us, we're gonna use this first section, validation rule analysis. Then I can run validation rule. I can go here, select my, select, you can see all, these are all the, the, the facility I had before. So, because I want to run for all these facilities at once, I select the district. After selecting the district, I can go here and select the month. I can select the month, let me go maybe three month time, January up to March. And then here, I can go here also and select the HIV validation rule. And after selecting HIV validation rule, I go down here on this button called validate. Once I run the button called validate, I can see one facility called Cardinal is the one in April which has violated the, violated the rule. And that's the rule which has been violated is that the HIV test positive less or equal to the test performed are not respected. You can see here the left side, which, which, are, which is the HIV test positive is higher than the right side, which are HIV test performed. So to see in details, I can go here and click on this button to get more about this violation. If I'm clicking, I'm clicking there, the system will show me, the system will show me the name of the rule which has been violated and the value on the left side, the value which has been entered this is the value for HIV male positive. This is the value for HIV female positive. And on the 
right side, this is uh, the test performed for male, and this is uh, the test performed for female. So I can see the detail, and this allows me to go back to the form of this facility and change, change the value to match, to match the exact rule. Most of the time, the person can do a, a manual error when, uh, when entering the data or when calculating. You remember most of this value coming from a aggregation of the case we are coming one by one and at the end of the reporting period, if it is a monthly, they can calculate by adding one to another one. So sometimes the data manager or the, uh, the, the nurse who is the one doing it can make some manual, manual calculation error. So after seeing the error, where the error is coming from, I have to go back into the data app form. Remember this, maybe I have to go back here into the data app, into the data entry form and check. We can see the error is saying Cardinal Hospital Gateway. I'm going here, Cardinal Hospital Gateway. The data set is HIV. The period is, I think it is March. Let me check. The period is April. 2021, I can go here previous, look for April 2021, and go here to check the value who are exceeding or are not are violating the rule. I have to reduce this maybe to, if I'm reducing this like this, to 23. Please go ahead for the question. Hello. Yes, Mr. Neil. Yeah, thank you. Firstly, I would like to know whether the recording will be shared with us. And then secondly, you are very low for me. Thank you. I don't get it. There is, they are very low? Yeah, yeah, you are very low. You are very low. Ah, you don't get my voice. I have to, to speak loudly. My volume is, the volume is fine for me. Okay. <laughs> Let me try to, to raise, to raise the, the voice. So thank you, Mr. Neil, for your comments. So we go back to that form. You remember we seize, after running a validation rule analysis, we seize on this district, we seize this two, uh, this same facility has on two different period violated the rule we set it before. So we are going back. The purpose of checking this is to go back into the form and correct the value. But normally, this is maybe I'm, I can correct it directly, but in the normal situation, in the current, uh, in a normal situation, you have to call back. Like if I was the one at the district level, I have to call back the data manager of this facility and tell him to explain why this difference. If we to discover or to find out what was the reason for making this error, maybe, maybe it can be, Maybe it is a manual error. Maybe he's this some time people say is cooked value. He didn't even had time to see what he's putting in. So before you change the data of someone, you have to get his approval or to get explanation from him to know why the person, to know why the person has entered this error. But let us suppose, let us assume that. We have contacted him. He explained to us the real value. And here where it was 123, we change it into 23, maybe typing error. And then we go back and run the validation rule to check if the rule is still respected. So we can see the rule is not yet respected. We have to correct it again. 
until until we get you can see the rule is now respected and it is not for this month only it is for this april you remember it was for april and it was for february 2022 so we are going back again next year feb 2022 we can take we can go directly to the sex section and the other era is coming it is the same rule which has been that is being violated so i am going to change here and put one i assume i have talked to the data manager and showed him the error where the error coming from and he tells he told me the correct value that's why i'm coming here or i can tell him to change so the best way even is to tell him go there in that reporting form in this period you change you made this mistake so you have to put the correct value after doing so you can come at the central level and run again the validation rule to check if it is okay or if you don't have access on this, you can be having access on the data. You can be having access on the data quality app because you are at a regional level. You have access on the data quality app. Data quality app, you rerun again, you rerun again the validation to see if the error you notified to the data manager, he was able to correct it. You can also notice here that the value, the value has uh, the value to run in a validation rule, you have to run it using the same three dimension. So you can, you run a validation rule using the organization unit and the period so after running this I, I was you remember on the previous example i was on the bad district i choose a very long period it is like since january of last year up to today i go down here also i choose the hiv validation rules and i can do validate to see you can see down here validation passed successfully so meaning like he has corrected the data. So this summarizes what I explained into the, pre, the, the first slide. Before we start the second part of the slide, I would like to hear from you if it's okay or we take another example. So on my side, uh, thank you very much, Hamza. We have learned a lot from you in terms of the violation rules, and you have clearly indicated about it the two ways that you can go to that, that validation rules, whether you can come at that interlevel level or that quality issues. And also you have clearly explained about the left side operator and the right side. So thank you very much. And the feedback mechanism is that to be asked that data managers. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who wants some clarification or we can continue with the second part? Uh, Rebecca Hello. here. Hello? Hello. It's Rebecca. Hello, I Rebecca. wanted to know. Yeah, yes. thank you. I wanted to know uh, whether it keeps, the system keeps a track of these uh, errors. Uh -huh. Thank you, Rebecca, for the, the question. The system keeps the track of the value which has been changed, not here on the validation rules, but here on the data entry forms. Like if I'm going here on the data entry form, you remember that is where we change the value. So if I'm going back to the data entry form and I want to know what was there previously and what is there now, I can double click here on the field which I was like, I'm on the central level, on the regional level or district level. I want to see, maybe I just uh, seek the data manager at the facility level to change, but I didn't know 
what was the previous i didn't like memorize what was the previous value and what is the current value so what i have to do i go back to that form i can clearly you remember uh, now, now the rule has disappeared but maybe we can go to another period. you remember it was showing us the rule which was violated so i can go back in the data entry form and double click where i think the person changed where i double click where the person changed and i can see i can clearly see that previously it was 43 now it is 40 uh, no no please previously it was 23 now it is 43 you can see the dates the last so on this date we can see on the first data entry the data manager put 23 on today's you can see today's where i am changing the system it is 43 i can do so also for the for the other i can do so also for the other uh, where is the other field also Sorry, my screen is like, I want this to close this and to show you that I can perform the same into the other. I can go here again also and check on here, audit tray. I can check also the value was previously 21 now is 56 and here i can have also the name of the person who stored the data and last modified this is where you can you can the system keeps the track keeps the the history change of the value into the system and if you're at a level on the higher level you can check and you know the data came from this value to this value Am I very answering? Good. Very good, very good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. I have a question, sir. Yes. Uh, how long does it take for the data to reflect on the on the like on the validation sheet? If it's, if it's corrected on the data entry page, how long does it take to sync? to show on the rules I want them to is it immediately or probably yes no no it is because it is once you hit this complete button you know this complete button because let's explain let me explain when you are entering data into this form in the reporting form data are being automatically saved into the uh, into the database so from this form it goes directly to into the database so if you are running, that's where I was showing you that there is three ways of running the validation rules. Even if the person did not complete, but you can use this run validation rule on this, pre, this, this one, this button, and it will show you directly. When you're still on the data entry on this form, without even going to another form, you run this validation rules. If you have made already the mistake, even if you have not yet filled this down path but if the rule has been broken at this level the 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 role will pop up and it will show you the warning message thank you sir. thank you too rebecca i saw another hand are you coming back or is the same previous hand no 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 it was a mistake bashir please go ahead Uh, thank you, Hamza. We have seen how to check the validation using the two, uh, the data entry and uh, the report app. But uh, I'm not sure. I think I didn't get it. How do we create this validation? Because on the on the slides, I have seen the left and right side and some formulas. So yes, 
is this validation are with the system or do you have to create the validations? Oh, thank you for your question. This validation, you have to create them. The system gives you the, the, the features and you can go in and uh, you create them. The tomorrow session, today is just to review, to review the, the validation rules, but tomorrow session will be configuring the validation rules. So please be there on the tomorrow session. I can have you, I can show you a small, just small to show you. We are using this app and you can go, you can go there and create. Now here I can review all the existing validation rules. And if I want to create, I, create, I do here on the plus and create a validation rules. But I'm inviting you on tomorrow session. That's where you will see how to create the validation rule using logical rules or using a threshold or another calculated value or imported value from external sources. Please be there tomorrow. Today we just review and we explain, we introduce. It is like an introduction on the introduction on the validation rule, how they works, why validation rules. And tomorrow they will show you how to, to do the validation rule. Okay, thank you, thank you. Th thank you too. Uh, Kalugi Beila, please go uh, ahead. Thank, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, Kalugi. Uh, thank you very much for the session. My question is under validation rules, do you, do you have to first run it by yourself? Isn't there a way you can automate it that if I know I don't want uh, positives, I mean, total tested male and female to be less than the positives identified. Is it, can it run it automatically that whenever I enter like a positive a 30 and total tested is 10, it should mm. just flag it red such that you don't have to run the validation. Because at times I've seen instances, people do not run the validation route, they just go and complete the data set. Isn't there we can automate it? Thank you. The, when you are on the data entry form, when you are on a data entry form, before when you are hitting the complete button, if you don't complete the, the if you don't hit the complete button, the validation rule cannot show you. But when you are hitting the complete button, before it's save that the, the form is completed at this time, it shows you that this rule has been violated. I I don't. Do you remember? Let me maybe go back and show you show you on. Um, let us maybe change and take another district. We try another district and see if we have a validation rule. So uh, there is no data. Maybe let me find last year. I don't know, this data okay. Maybe I have to go back here and find another facility and check. Okay. Like this data, they are okay. But let me try to, to incomplete here. And before I complete, you know, when I'm putting the error, the system will not show, it will not flag me directly. But before, when I complete, I click here on complete, the system will ask me and it will flag you the error. It will flag the error and showing you the error and where the error is coming from. It's showing you the error is coming from this validation rule. So if you are the one who did the validation, you can understand. But even if you are the data manager, you can understand that the positive case are exceeding the total case you had. So uh, another way of automating it is we will see it in the, some, uh, some slides to come, whereby you can generate an email which will come and a, a message which will show you the rule which has been violated. So that is another way of automated, 
the validation rule. But here on this form, it's not like after doing it from here, I have to complete first in order to get the error. So I guess most of the question has been answered. Can we? Uh -huh. Let's Mr. Le Leba Joa. Oh, thank you. Yes, I have a slight question. Yes, when you run the validation, I realized that it shows two sort of two error messages, yet there's only one error. I was wondering as to why it chose two. Can you run the validation again if there's, yeah. Uh -huh. The same error is like duplicated. Huh? Yeah, something like that. Why is it doing that? Normally it shouldn't. I, it shouldn't. This should only flag you one error. Okay. Uh, it shouldn't. Normally it should, it just flags you the error, but here it is this duplicating the, the same message twice. I don't know what, what is exactly. Hamza. Nam. Hamza, just one quick one. I think on that, what you see, you see those are different the validation rules. So uh, they, they set two validation rules in the system. So there are two validation rules, but looking at the same thing. That's why it's ah. showing those two. Yeah. Ah, thank you, Prosper. So as Prosper is explaining, you can see this, there is HIV. Look at the name, even the name here. You can see they are different. So even though they are doing the same, but it is two different validation role. Mm, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you too. So we can continue on another with the other slide. And um, I hope now this first part, you're okay with it. Yes, sir. Thank you. So we're gonna going back to the slides. So generating program specific out layer. Statistical tool outside of the HS2 can be used to generate this value, ARA, STATA, and SPSS. In order to generate and use this information in the HS2, you will have to export all the source of data out of the HS2, import the outlier data back into the HS2 after everything has been generated. So for data entry generally, uh, you know, you, 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 you set some outliers. You set some outliers so that you can compare your data entry. That is like to know if your data are correct or exact. You set some outliers and you can compare the data which has been entered with those outliers. So here you can use other tools which are not, which are outside the HS2 to generate those value, to generate those outliers. You can use, they are suggesting these three tools, but if you, you have another one, you can use another one. And in order to use that outliers value you generated outside DHS2, you can, you have either to import those back data back into DHS2, there is a mechanism you can call them back into DHS2 using API, or you can export data from DHS2 outside DHS2 and you go, you import them into those other statistical tool and you compare the data outside DHS2 or you import the outliers from those outside tools and you compare them into DHS2. Into DHS2, there is a functionality called predictors. The predictor can also be used to generate outliers. This can be advantages in your data if your data is already available in DHS2. So most of the time, because 
the data managers, the facilitator reporting every month in order to buy another tools. If it doesn't require too much cal complicated calculation, you can still use DHS2, this feature called predictors, which can make you, can help you to create outliers and to compare the data against these outliers. There is no need to export modified data to ensure it is compatible with another tool. And likewise, that's the outlier that the outlier data imported file is compatible with DHS2. So this here we are explaining for normal calculation, which are not involving too much complex, uh, complex mathematics. You can use this function called predictors and it will save you. First, you will not need another outside uh, tools. Secondly, you don't have again to import back or to import in data from DHS2 to outside or from outside to DHS2. Predictors are data element value that are automatically generated from sample of current and past data, depending on the period you have specified to be included in the calculation. To, to make a predictors, you do a calculation, you make a formula, and based on what you want, what you want to, 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 to compare with. So if it is an immunization program in malaria program, you have your formula and you can do the calculation. Then that predictors, the value which will be automated or will be automatically calculated, we have to go and feed a data element. You have to create a data element, give that data element the same name of the predictors and the data which will be calculated from the calculated value will be uh, auto-populated into data elements. So for example here, to review immunization data quality, predictor can be used to analyze previous data in order to generate reasonable outlier for future data. So another advantage of using predictors, it can help you, first of all, to check the consistency, but second, it can help you to predict or to generate data for a future period. You can find the generate. If you want to learn more about these predictors, you can use this link and get to know more about how to, to make or how to create predictors. So here we have example of predictors. As I explained to you, you will need to have a formula so for example, we could specify that the formula of generating data is average plus three times standard deviation. So you can make this formula and put it into the predictors. And if the secondly, you can specify the period, the period, the period against which you want this period, this formula to run. You want this formula to run on data of we this formula, you want it to run on data of which period? So you specify the period. Like here, we can say the last 11 months that precede last month. So to, if you want to generate data from, like they say, December 2020 here, the formula or the standard is you run the, dat the data for the period of last month before prior to, no, prior to November, before November, prior to the last month of the month you want to, to generate data for. So another criteria, uh, another is to remove any value that is considered as an extreme outlier. This also, when you are setting an outlier, you, you remove, you have to set some limits, meaning like those extreme outliers you have to let them out. So example, like this example, when I'm trying to illustrate it, we want to generate data from, for this December, 2020. You have to run 11 months, data for 11 previous months, excluding November. This is what I was saying. 
So to have the data of this one, so you can count if you are counting this, it is 11 months. And you take that 11 months, the average of this 11 months is this 122, 122.8. Then you put its standard deviation. Then you put a formula to calculate the outlier. The outlier will be the average of that, those 11 months prior the last month plus three times standard deviation. And we have 173. The 173 will be the data we predict to be in December. Therefore, a value above 173 in December could reasonably be considered as an extreme outlier in this case. So in this case, as it was stated before, we have to remove the extreme outlier, meaning above 173, we, we don't need those data. Using, using the generated outliers. Once we have generated the outliers, we need to check our data to ensure that data value do not exceed the outlier that has been generated, whether via predictor or imported value. So the outlier, you remember that we say that the outlier can be generated whether using the predictor or imported data from an external tool of your choice based on the formula you have specified. We could perform a manual check by reviewing the actual value versus the generated value to, the, to determine if they are out there. If you want to check if they are out there into your data, the data you, you they entered, the data in your system or in your reporting form, you could perform a manual check to review if the data, the actual value you have, against the, uh, the generated value, you can determine if you have an outlier or not. So for example, once you have value entered, these are the organization unit or the facility. These are the data which this organization unit or facility, remember we were on a rotor, on an immunization program, and we say maybe on a rotavirus, Rotavirus second dose given, we want to compare the second dose given against a threshold which has been set. So we can see on this month of January 2019, we have 6,757, 6, uh, 57, which are extreme, very, very extreme comparing to the threshold we set it on that period. And you can see the other value. So if the condition was like the dose given has to be less than, the dose given has to be less than the threshold set, you can see these other facilities are meeting, most of them, are, 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 this also is ex violated the role, but these three, and three, four, five, six. In these six, only two facility have violated the rules, but the other four are within the range set. Using the generated outliers. This may be difficult. However, if you want to look at many time periods, organization unit and data element together, this may be very difficult. However, if you want to look at many time periods, you remember we have to generate an outlier, we have to look at a many time period and compare organization units and data together at the same, at the same time that's when we are using these outliers. We can also use validation rule in order to compare the actual value that has been entered with the value we have generated as out value, out outlier via our formula to check for consistency. So if you want to check the consistency of data over a certain period of time, we can use validation rules to compare the actual value, the value which are in the system, entered in the system, against an outlier which has been generated via a, for, a certain formula to check the consistency of the entered data.
This is being used most of the time, like for, let's say this example of the, example of the immunization, whereby they want to see if the entered data are reflecting the truth, are reflecting the reality on the ground, or they have been cooked or just put there to mess just in purpose of reporting. So you set an out layer and you compare the value which has been entered against the out layer. This can be run in both data entry as well as to check the consistency or to check to run this validation role. You can use both the two methods we use in the data entry form or in the data application, data quality app. Then you click on validation rule analysis in case validation rule and analysis. The same way as you use the same way as you use in logical rules. So there is, I, I guess we need to do some another exercise exercise or have to present you something about this out layer before we go to, to notification also. We still go back to, we still go back to the, the system and I guess we have, Where is that? One second, or well, let me let me go directly here. To check the outlayers, I think we are. So we can, if you want to check some exercise to check the out layers. I don't know if I am still, everyone is still seeing my screen because I shared the entire, the entire screen. Yes, we can see. Yes. So I go, I go, uh, back, I, I go back to data entry. Remember, they say after setting your formula and creating an out layer, you can check if the validation rule is, is respected or it has been violated through data quality apps or through the data entry data entry apps. So we are going here on the Beetle Health Center. We are going into immunization and we check maybe it was January of this year. And the same, we can run, we can run validation rule either through here or through the other parts. Then once we run the validation rules, we, I'm feeling like the screen is small. Are you seeing all my screen or it is too small? So you can, you can, see. You can see the the last one. The last one is for rotavirus administrated 
the rule was stated that it has to be lesser or equal to the, the second rotavirus administered that has to be lesser or equal to a rotavirus threshold. So if you are seeing the left side here, we have 133, and which is higher than 127 on the right side. That is, that is why we have, uh, that is stated that we have uh, violated this rule. So another way of checking this validation rules, it is either you can also go into the other way, the data app, the data quality app through validation rule analysis, and you choose your, I think it was something like here. Okay, I can take the entire district or I can take one facility. I can go here directly since January. And do validate to check if there is some validation rule which has been violated or not. As you can see, most of the most of facility has not respect the validation rules. Let me make it a little bit smaller. You can see all these facilities, like for this, the hepatitis B dose given, which should be less than the total used, the total used and wasted dose, the the, the, uh, the uh, validation rule name is like hepatitis, DPT hepatitis B dose given has to be less or equal, has to be less or equal to the total, total dose used. So the total dose used, it is coming from a calculation also of the dose at the stock, stock at the beginning of the month against the the, the 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 stock used during the month and we have the total used during that month so the dose given has to be less or equal to the dose used it cannot go it cannot go be, be beyond that you see they give 388 dose while they have used they stated that they had used only 382 so this is one rule. This is the second, the same rule which has been violated here. This is for all this facility. I think they all violated the same rule. The butterfly, the beetles, the cockroach, all of them have violated. I don't know, there is another one. The IPV dose, we have here on fly hospitals, the IPV dose given the same way should be equal or less than all the dose used. So you can see 167 is higher than 160. So the same way we can go, if we choose one of, one of these, we can go and click on the details to see to see what is the what is the the, the 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 value you can see the value on the right side and here the value on the left side let me check again
So, so far, is there any question? I think this is like the same way. The verification is the same way than the previous. The only difference is here is on the previous, we we're checking against the logical value. But here we are checking against threshold value, which are calculated value uh, or outliers. Any, any, any question? Can we maybe suggest with my co-facilitator if we can give to people some minutes to pause and to go back for this exercise? I just have one question, sir. Yes, Rohinda. Good. Um, I, I'm just, uh, I would like to ask if there is a a way to uh, to run this uh, data outside uh, uh, DHS2 by using uh, not on RR or Python. Does it require any plugin or uh, there is a loop where you can uh, do your analysis uh, uh, locally uh, without uh, using any other plugin? There, there is two ways. If you follow the, the presentation, there's one way you can export data from DHS2 to outside and you choose whatever statistical tool you'll use to calculate out layers. So there is a part, maybe the, there is another session after tomorrow, which they'll be showing you how to use the pivot table and data visualizer, whereby you can analyze your data and export them outside DHS2. Then once it is outside DHS2, you can go and use the statistical tool of your choice. The other, the other way is import within DHS2, you set an out layer using predictors. So the predictors, in the predictors, you set the formula. Once you have set the formula, then you'll compare the value coming from the predictors with the value which has been entered in the form. And uh, the way to compare it, after comparing them, that's how you can come here and you show the rule that has been, the rule that has been violated. I don't know if I'm answering. Yeah, thank you. So you can either do it in, within DHS2 without going outside, and within DHS2, you'll use out layers uh, you'll use out layers set from the formula and using predictors, or this the other way you go. The other way is to go to go to go outside. You export them outside the HS2 and you you use your the statistical tools of your choice. Maybe we need to know as a Yes, Stephen. Oh, as low Hello, thank you very much. Of, what uh, I wanted to get clear, maybe is low that we, we are using like the predictors to set the outliers, then we depend on the outliers to set the validation rules. I don't know whether that is right. Uh, low coverage, Some clarification. Uh, maybe we, are, we, we, we are using the outliers, yes, we are to set the predictors. Then we use the validation rules, which takes into one part, the actual value or the data we want to check, and we compare that actual value against against the uh, outliers we set into the predictors. I don't know if you are getting me. Yes, I get it now. Uh, you are getting that. So the out the predictor we, is a tool which will help us to calculate a formula, to calculate a value which we will be comparing against the, car the current or the actual data which is being entered into the system. So the, I saw another raised hand, I guess it is, oh, it is an old one. 
So maybe I may Hello. suggest we. Hello. Yes. Hello. Um. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So I want to know whether this note is we have this note, the PowerPoint presentation. Yes, you don't have it them yet. Have you rolled in into the Moodle instance? Not yet. Not yet. Huh? Have you uh, uh, logged into the Slack channels? No, I'm only on uh, Zoom now. Zoom. Only watching on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. So there is a Slack. Maybe let me before we we send people to take a health break. Maybe we can take through them all the channel we are using, and from there, most of the people will be familiar and will roll against it. Against a welcome back. We are we stopped on a running running validation rule against a threshold or a calculated value. So to put you on, we want to review with you. Then after I can let everyone log in and uh, check all the exercise we did together. And then after we may go to another topic. So we can take this few minutes I just show you how to review and then every one of you will log in and try to review and to check by himself. Is it okay for you? Good. It's fine. Okay. So starting Are you seeing, uh, I have to share the screen again. This is the instance we will use to, for this exercise. You remember, uh, like, yes, yes, briefly, the validation rules helps us to check the data which has been entered into the reporting form, if they are consistent or if they are true. To check the consistency, we can use logical rules or we can use a threshold which is a calculated value and we, check, we compare the value entered against the calculated value so in brief this is what we have seen so far in the slide so we want to check them here into the practice so to check the validation rule there is two way of checking the validation rule either the data data entry apps or into the data quality apps we are going into the data entry apps we are choosing a given, we are choosing a given facility. We run the validation rules against a period we, will, we want. And we have on the data entry form, we have three button. We have this button, which can help us to check the validation rule. We have this button down here, which can help us. We can also, have the complete button which help us also check the validation rule and to check it we just hit the complete button and we see if there is no problem of validation rules there will be no pop-up message message if there is a problem if there is a problem you can see when you are running a validation rule a pop-up message which will show will warn you it is a warning message which will warn you and show you what is the error which has been broken or what is the rule which has been violated so in this example if you are looking at the same time as me i just entering some fake data here and run the validation rule down here 
and the system warned me with a pop-up message telling me this rule called HIV test positive against uh, HIV test perform has been violated whereby the positive tested are higher than the test, all the tests performed. So in this case, you have to go back to the form and change the value to the correct value. Prior to this, as I explained to you earlier, you have to call the data manager or you have to call the responsible of the health facility which reported this data and ask them, ask them to ask them to correct the data to the correct value. You don't do that on their behalf. You just ask them and they correct the data. So after correcting the data, you can recheck again, or you can, you can recheck again using the data entry form. This is one way. Another way is going on, if you have a lot of facility, you want to check the problem they have, you can go against, you can select on a higher level of the hierarchy and it will show you all the reporting form or the facility which are under your supervision. To do so, we have to use the data quality app. We are passing to the data quality app. We run, we click here, run validation. We select, let's say a district. We select a period. We select a period, we select the validation rule you want to check and we click on validate. The system will show us what are the validation rule which have been, which have been violated. To get more on this error, we can go here on the details section and we click on this show details button. The system will show, uh, will show us we don't see, we don't have the right to edit the data in. Mr. Sengyumva wants to edit data. Uh, then the system will show you the left side, the data element which has been put into the left side, the data element which are in the right side, and you can see where exactly the data, like from here, you can see that this is 4,000 while for male tested positive, while the female are 80. So obviously you just uh, assume that it is a typing error and you call the person, he puts the correct data. So for us, we can go back again into the data entry form and correct this data. This is one way. We are going to correct data. And then it was, it was in April or in January. Then I can go back and correct the data. I can again run again the data quality app, run validation, choose the period. choose the validation rule to check and choose the district where I was before. And you can see that first rule has disappeared. I remain with the rule from the Crow Health Center where also they have the same, the same error. They have 3000. So I can again go there for the period of April on this Crow Health Center. Uh, 
Rao Health Center on HIV on uh, no, no, it is not on April. So You can see the pop-up message here, which is telling me that the rule has passed successfully. So this is one way for checking the logical rules. There is a second way for checking the threshold, the value against a threshold. We go back again to the data, data application. We go back to the data application app then we choose we choose this facility we choose for this time we're going to choose for immunization and also we have to choose any period let's say this period. We're gonna choose this period. And we can run a validation rule of this the same way. If you are running the validation rule, it will be like the validation rule should be less should be less than or equal than they used. The IPV dose should be less or equal to the way uh, to the given should be IPV dose given should be equal or less to the IPV dose used. The total dose used here, it is coming from this calculation. Here we can see there is this error. It is coming from this calculation where the IPV dose used, we have IPV, where is IPV? Yes, IPV dose used, it is the calculation of this for the under one year and this for the above one year. Then they combine these two value, which it has to be less or equal than here on the stock, we have IPV, the used IPV here on the stock has to be the starting month minus, or like the starting month plus the receiving minus the frozen, minus the expired, minus the broken, minus the missing, and we get the, and minus the ending balance, so we get the used, to get the used, is to do this calculation and we take this opening balance plus the received, then we subtract the frozen, the expired, the broken, the missing, and also the end, ending the month or ending the, the period, period, the reporting period to obtain the used value. So this is another way of using some calculated an addition of two or three data elements against another total of an additional or multiple operation of two or three data elements. Another way is using the threshold. I want an example of using the threshold. Let me check one example using the threshold. Uh, I guess we, we check one example of using the threshold. 
that I can see I'm running the time and I want you to log in and to do it by yourself. This is still IPV. I'll find another one. So in brief, this is what we saw from uh, the beginning. So now I want all of you, please type in this, this link into your browser. I don't know if, let me share with you. I want to share something with you. Can all of you type this, please? You type this into your browser. Hello? Are we together? Yeah, yes, you can. So yes. you type you type this into your browser. After typing this into your browser, I guess you have it. You will be directed hello? in hello after oh, typing this I can hear you you are saying hello yes yeah sir I know I can get you yesterday I brought a sunny in time yeah poor for I couldn't get you please come come again I didn't get you well I, no listen I told you that my sister in that one I'm in poor welfare that year you don't have access in this one. I'm in town and I didn't bring it. I brought it yesterday, but I'll call you. I couldn't get you. Uh, huh. Can someone? So listen, I, I said that my sister in that branch. I'm in Congo and town. Yeah. Uh, and if uh, you look, tell I... the current giving me problems, so my current can can't wait. Hello, hello, are you, are you assist me? Yeah, Hamza. Nam. Yeah, I will assist him. I have sent him a private Anna message. Uh, thank you. You'll be to the supermarket, yes, sir. Okay, then. Uh, but you see there now, you come in, pay different money. Again. Maybe I have to meet him. So, Thank you. Uh, everyone is on this page, please. Have you reached this page? Yes. So you can go here on create an account and you hit create an account and you create your account. You put your username. I'm sharing this, you are not seeing. Actually, you're not sharing the screen. The screen is oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So I was here. Are you seeing this screen? Yes, now we're seeing it. Uh, now you go on this button, create an account. Yeah. Then you put your name, just a short name, and put the password, you confirm a password, an email, phone number, and you hit this button of create. You create your own account. Yeah. Don't, don't put space between your name. If you want to put a name, just one name is enough, or you put your name, then in the middle you can put dot. Like my name is Hamza Ndabatez, I can put Hamza N or Hamza dot Ndabatez. So that will be depending on but don't put Amza a space and uh, then in the buttons. Put only one word. Uh, okay. I wanna put another email. So I guess all of you has are able to create an account. Now you can log yes. in with the account you created. 
you can log the in here. We put uh, your account. You put the password you set there and sign in. Most of us are here. Hello, if most of us are here. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the, we then we can go. Leader. Then we can go here. Then we can go here into the. and we choose data entry app. As most of us are already there, we can, did you download this document? from the from the instance training instance have you downloaded this document oh. no there yeah. is three documents there is one document for the slide another document for this exercise and another for additional exercise so this hello amza are you nam so let me just send the link to everyone so that they can download it now. Yes. So meaning some people are not in the training instance. Yeah. Yes. 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 People, you have to, please, you have to go into the training instance because we are even going to share the word of the day. So how are you going to? How are you going to submit as you have been present without having access to the to the Moodle? Please try to access Moodle. There is instruction on how to access Moodle on the Slack. So please, please, before I share the word of the day, make sure all of you are on the are on the Moodle on the training instance so that. You can download the material. You can also fill in the word of the day to prove that you have attended today's class, today's session. <clears throat> so this exercise, we are gonna, so, we are gonna yeah. take it up. We're gonna take 15 minutes to run the exercise, to check, it is just checking, it is not, we don't run anything. We just check this stuff up to page, up to page, let me see, I think page 10, then there is a remaining part we have to finalize or We have to go up to page 12. Then from page 12, you stop. Or page, uh, I give you 15 minutes up to 20, 27th, 15 minutes for this exercise. In the chat box, we can be helping some other people who does who has difficult difficult to access or to interpret this.
Yes, Abdurrahman. The page is not numbered, but when you are scrolling, you will see page 12. You will see that we are on the page 12. The activity is to, to just review these validation rules. You review them either passing through the data app or passing through the data quality app, data entry app or the data quality app. Then you run validation analysis, then run validation. I'm answering Ganya Yakub. There is this person called Zuncheme Nagnon. Uh, I, as I explained earlier, tomorrow it will be a session for configuring data validation uh, validation rules. So if you want to see how to configure validation rules, please attend tomorrow sessions and they will be showing all the, the rules we review today, how to create them and to put in your conditions. Thank you. Uh, or a tapping error. So the ID, so the ID, the idea, the main purpose of this notification is to let people, the beneficiary, react quickly and provide solution to the data quality problem. The notification should be meaningful and be sent to the right people. Otherwise, they will become a burden and ignore, ignored over time. So whenever you are sending or when you are configuring a notification, validation notification, you have to give it the, the right meaning and the message which express exactly what is express exactly what is wrong and also you have to send the message to the people the, the right beneficiary the people who can take decision who can take action don't send like a message to people who does does have anything to do with uh, with that message in that case they will send this message in the spam and the the aim of alerting them the aim of requesting them to react will not be reached because it will be taken as a burden. So please, when you are configuring a validation rule notification, please make sure the message will be sent to the right people and will be having a meaningful message. So thank you. This is the end of this presentation. We have to go to, I have to bring you through the, the same instance to show you how the validation rule will be sent out into DHS2 internal message. And tomorrow they will show you how to configure them. And also if time will allow tomorrow, they can even show you how to enable like an intern, uh, a server 
email server so that the message can go directly to your emails because you want people if an error has been uh, has been detected in a facility at a thousand kilometer from you they want you if you are program uh, coordinator or you are an mne you have to report it directly they want you to react in a timely manner so let us go back to the let us go back to the instance and we show you the validation rule so to see the validation notification you have to go here you remember on this nine point where we found all the apps and we go to the message message application You have to go here. Are you all see my screen? You, are you seeing this envelope here on the right corner? So you have to go here on this internal data is to message. Are you all of you seeing this one, this part? Then I click there. Yeah. I click there and it will show me. Why? For me, I see it uh, from your screen, but it's not present uh, in my. Uh, what is that Let's see. Can you meet, please? Uh -huh. Then you can see in here. In the part of validation, are you all seeing in the part of validation? Yeah. Hello? Um, I, for me, I'm seeing it from your screen, but uh, it's not present in my instance. Yeah, uh, maybe it is different of uh, right. We don't have the same right, but we will uh, see if we can uh, upgrade your 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 role and get to see all these uh, apps. So going back here, so I went, for all of us, I went here on the landing page, which is the dashboard. So from the dashboard, you can see on the right corner, you will see this envelope. And the envelope, if you are clicking on the envelope, you will see, this is an internal DHS2 messaging system. And you will see here on validation. If you are clicking on validation, it will show you the validation like this. All this validation has been run automatically when we were trying to, when we are passing through the run validation analysis. Then we can see here, if you are clicking on one validation, it will show you, it will show us the rule which has been violated. And on this present case, we have rotavirus second dose given exceed the calculated threshold. You remember what we, we saw in previous. It's, it, this happened on this facility called Big Old Hospital Gateway. The same happened on the facility called Beatles Health Center, on the Flounder, health center and with different values. It is the same rule which has been broken, but but uh, the, each facility broke the rule with different values. So this is the way of seeing the notification through the system. Another way of seeing the notification, we can go through. 
another way of sending the notification, you remember that we present that notification can be sent manually. To send the notification manually, we can go through the data quality app. We go through the data quality app, run validation rule analysis. We take, we take like the desert district, we choose the period. We choose the period. We choose here the immunization threshold. And here, if all of you are seeing my screen, we click here on send notification. Then once you click on send notification, we validate. It will send notification to the recipient. So notification will be sent to the recipient. And here it will be, it will, it is showing these rules. It will show this rule to the recipient. How to enable people like recipient to receive this notification? You have to go here in the settings. If you are here in the settings, So what the what we saw in the slide was like validation rules can be sent manually or can be sent automatically and can be sent using three channels. It is DHIS2 internal message. This is what I showed you through this envelope. Can be sent through an email or it can be sent through a SMS. But in both email and SMS, it will require it will require the it will require the SMS and the email to be configured. The server, SMS server and email, SMS gateway and email server to be configured. Meaning like they will specify this server going and collect the message from DHS2 and send them through the uh, specified people. So for the email, in order the system to send email to the recipient, we have to go to the set in the setting of the system and allow each user or the user we want them to receive this notification to allow them to receive email notification. And if you want also for SMS, the same thing. This is what I'm showing you passing through here through this uh, nine uh, button, like this menu. And you, after you select on this menu, you select settings. When you are in this settings panel, you go to emails. You go to, I don't know, this email is to set up in an, a, to set up uh, a email server. There is general, there is a place we specify. There's a place we specify, send email to.
Sorry if the internet is taking a little bit time. So you can see here on the down part, enable message email notification, enable message SMS notification. I don't know if all of you are seeing this part. This is where you specify for email. Once you choose yes, yes, it will send, meaning like this user is, being, is able to receive SMS from the system and email from the system. So, this is after enable the user to receive message. When you are, you can even go here. Now on the data data quality apps and send the notification. A notification will be sent to this user if the email server is configured. I think most of the, the material has been covered. I don't know if there is one question or my co-facilitator, if he can add something in order to make people, if you are specifying here, send notification and the user is unable, is able already to get email and SMS. Once you are doing validation, it will send SMS, it will send the SMS through the internal DHIS2 and email and SMS if those have has been set. My fellow facilitator, if they can help me, or they can add something or if thank you yeah i think just want to thank you for taking the people through the session i followed all of it and it was quite interesting i don't think 